All right. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for watching. We are starting this new series. Of course, you've already seen the video before it, but this series is called Coffee with Kittle, where we just have interviews with amazing collaborators, amazing artists. And today joining us is Jimbo, a master letterer, calligrapher, and even illustrator. Seems like a master of NFTs. You're always doing something new. It's amazing to just <laughs> follow you on Instagram and whatever you're doing. So today we're actually going to be talking about how to find your style, like uh, your artistic style or your design style. It's a very heavy question. Uh, we might not have time to unpack the theological or philosophical uh, nature of that question, but uh, Jimbo is going to guide us with some key tips and things like that for really nailing down your style. But what I thought would be nice first is Jimbo, if you could just introduce yourself, um, what it is you do, what you like to do, and I'm going to show a little bit of your work while you do that. Awesome. Uh, okay, let's start. Um, my name is Jimbo Bernaus. I'm a Spanish letterer, graphic design, as Drew said, uh, graphic designer, illustrator, NFT artist, uh, you name it. Um, so I have a design studio. I co-founded together with my partner, Thea. Um, and yeah, this is our website. We do work for clients around the globe and also we've just created like a little, um, you know, um, design, like a little shop where you can, you can browse and find uh, products for Procreate and also educational content. We also have a little school that we're building up for, you know, teaching creatives how to step up their game and yada, yada. Um, yeah, this is a bit who I am. Uh, I, I, I don't know how to how to say more you know like sometimes i'm always thinking like <laughs> maybe you should prepare something and you you kind of like learn it by heart you know so you yeah. actually say who you are and what you do but every time goes different so yeah, yeah. that's more or less what i do and what i am no that was perfect yeah no i just wanted to show scroll a little bit more uh, of just this amazing work which by the way everyone you can find it down in the description you can find uh jimbo's instagram and website YouTube, all that stuff's down in the description. So please uh, go and follow him, uh, show some support. So let's let's just get into it. I've been pretty excited about this. Um, most of the time when we've done uh, an interview or a, you know a co collaborator or a live or something, we're we're kind of like teaching something or we're saying like here's how you do this thing or whatever. Here's how you do it in Illustrator. Here's how you do it in Kittle. Um, but we're talking about finding your style so that that's a pretty tough question and i feel like it's something that i asked myself and it's something that i asked my peers and other mentors other people on instagram or yeah. wherever i could get them to answer and i would say like man how did you like how'd you like nail this down uh where'd you find this so let's just start there let's say someone reaches out to you they say wow gosh i just i love your work like what did you do to like find <laughs> this style like let's just start there i love this um i've been asked this question a lot of times and and i always say um it, it kind of feels like the style found me sort of um oh, wow yeah I, I i don't think because i think you know like if if i go back eight years ago when i started lettering i was really like a black and white person like everything like if you scroll down in my instagram you're gonna see it i was like afraid of colors sort of <laughs> and even though by that time i i was uh i was studying my my graphic design bachelor so i was supposedly be good at this you know like i i, I was supposed to my teachers were encouraging me to use colors and right. i obviously was doing it but but i was just super super afraid and I, so i think it feels like there is no shortcut to find a style and because a lot of people are trying to kind of like find the answer sort of like oh so this is how i find my style okay i'll do it and i'll find it but yeah there is no shortcut and sometimes i'm thinking myself do do i have a style and and people tell me you do have a style you know but for example now like this last year for example i've been more into texture like 3d lettering a bit more like kind of like retro lettering sort yeah. of like with a lot of grain and all that you know, and, and people are like, oh, yeah, I see something and I see some of your posts and I know it's you. And I'm like, yeah, but 
two years ago, I had a super complete different, you know, kind of way of doing things. Right. But I guess like you always leave your stamp, you know, no matter what you do. Yes. Yeah. It feels like, you know, um, everything you've lived, every, everybody you've met, like all your experiences kind of, you know, come together. And no matter what you do, you, you kind of have a style, even though personally, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have one. Like people <laughs> tell me, you know, so yeah. Um, yeah. It's complicated, man. Um, do you have a style? Like, like so yeah i mean it's it, mine i guess slight story kind of plays into how i even got here um even just with you know getting started with heritage type um you know yeah. meeting you know meeting toby and, and everyone and then and then now we're here with with kittle doing this amazing thing trying to help people design you know faster and easier um yeah. because i i i was trying different things and I was just more of a graphic designer taking on uh, like I, I mean I actually actually started as a web designer so cool. in in web design designing websites and things like that I just got really invested in typography because I had to really figure out hierarchy um, legibility UX, good UX and so I really wanted to up that part of it there is some graphic design that that comes in with uh, a UX designer, you know, front end, yeah. you know, not, I guess, you know, coding is obviously very important, but, um, I found like the Chris Doe through the future on, 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 uh, YouTube, uh, and like bought his courses, which were amazing. And then just forever was trying just yeah. really clean, like, uh, not Bajas, but just like really clean Helvetica type. Cause I think that's like one of the things they kind of pitch is really nice, clean hierarchical type. Um, yes. But from there, I just kept finding Instagram accounts that were beautiful vintage lettering. And so I kind of wanted to figure out how to do that. So from there, that kind of sparked, how do I figure out how to letter? So then I bought more courses to do that and then found heritage type. And then that kind of took off to where it is today. So I, I, I like to, I, I would like to lean towards a style that's like vintage, uh, like retro tattoo style you know you know how it's like yes. you see those they're very like monoline but there's detail in the monoline totally. so it's like it's really nice and like things work to get it's, it's vintage but it's not it's not like you know it's too victorian so i mean yeah. i haven't nailed it yet you know i don't know if anyone really nails a style and it's also maybe important to be able to diversify a little bit because you don't want to completely exclude this other lettering mural that could be cool if you're a letterer or whatever else and you're like yeah. oh, I, I could i could i could do that for sure i don't want to like be like no it only has to be <laughs> crazy color yeah. grain lettering for for you or like no it only has to be traditional tattoo style for totally. you know? so it's like i think that might be another fear or question that people have is like if i nail if i if i'm like if i want to do this style does that mean i can't do other styles um so like what what would you think like because it, it, it's important to niche down we keep hearing that from like every marketer ever they're like you're not gonna win if you don't niche down and then it's like you well you, you, whatever you know you know what i mean i understand yeah i completely um niching down is is good but um it's i would say that it's not made for everybody because it's definitely not made for me like um, you know, I would say that, okay, there's a lot to, to talk about in this, in this question, because I would say like three years ago, um, I started doing, um, products for Procreate. And, and as I said before, I do, like I did brushes, I did, uh, you know, all sorts of, you know, educational products kind of to step up the lettering game and, right. and a lot of, you know, like experts that I, that I've talked to, they were like, okay, maybe you should just stick to that you know because it's working so you you should keep pushing that and and like and uh, kind of forgetting clients and forgetting all kinds of commissions mm, and okay, and murals yeah. and you know just focusing and on products yeah exactly so i i love doing products and i love teaching and i love being like part of a community talking to people doing lives i i, I love that but i feel that i have to do other stuff because otherwise i get bored right so <laughs> I need to do like a packaging design from time to time, or I need to 
like right now for example yesterday yesterday i started like wood jewelry like like oh okay you know, yeah things that are not really related but like i feel that i that i need those things in order to m motivate me you know and continue doing what i do best you know so also i think like by doing different stuff kind of like i can bring it to the stuff that i do the best you know so so yeah, yeah. i don't know i don't know if i mean niching down is is important in terms of um maybe finding some sort of style but like i think it's really important as well to be open to other styles and be open to to for it to change because you were saying for example now that that you have this goal to to achieve this kind of tattoo you know uh retro style yeah but do you think for example that you will change your mind in a couple of years or do you think maybe when you achieve it like let's say you, you become the best at it do you think that that you're gonna get probably tired or you think like this is yeah. the stuff you want to do your whole life no i i think it'll be like yeah it, it'll be like okay what what else can i do or like what can i what can i what can yeah. i transfer this into you know right. like uh you know I, I, it's I, I've never seen like a, unless you're like a, like a tattoo company or like you sell ink or something. Like I've never seen like that crazy bright color American traditional tattoo on like, you know, I don't know, skincare. You know what I mean? So you got to like figure out like how could I take this illustration style and transfer it onto something that, you know, maybe would be really cool as a, as a product for example so like yeah yes. no i don't, I don't want to just do you know because that kind of limits me a little bit like i, I do do tattoos I, I love doing it for friends family clients whoever asked me on instagram can you do this tattoo um it's just interesting that that's been happening it, it's funny like how it comes when you start wanting to get better at something and you start doing it it's like you never know my account yeah my account's really small and someone's like wow could you do this like cross tattoo and Definitely. I'm like, yeah, sure. Like you can do it, <clears throat> but then you don't want to do, I mean, I guess you could, if you're amazing, <laughs> like if you're a big time tattoo artist and like, that's all you do. But yeah, if I got really, really, really great at it, um, you're always, I think you're always going to be like, well, what else, what else could I do? And you're also always going to be looking at like, what, what's the next big thing? Um, I don't think you have to like master the next big thing i guess we're talking about trends sort of but i don't yeah, think yeah. everybody needs to drop something and be like that's the next trend i got to get better at that because that's where the money is you know what i mean like what, what would you what yeah. do you think about like what, what would you say like hey like be careful of trends like what what do you think yeah okay i think i think the, the first thing that i never follow trends and that's and i'm not saying this is a good thing why because then my content is kind of like linear, right? So I would say that um, right now I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, like let's say there is, I don't know, Stranger Things was was uh, in the news, like let's say two weeks ago because it finished, right? Um, in in order to, you know, to, to get more exposure, like people seeing your work, may, maybe, you know, like, the, the, you know, the hashtags and the algorithms and all, all these things that I don't understand, but they are all ready for you to, to post something related to it, right? So, so I'm thinking maybe the trends, not just style trends, which was where you're talking about, I think something, but right. I would say like you, you can jump on the trends, but doing your own style. So you can, you can, you know, get, um, because trends by the end of the day are opportunities, right? So, so maybe, you know, you could, you could try to do that trend a, li a little bit, but, but bring it to, to your own, you know, bring it home and kind of, kind of, you know, do it in a unique way, you know, like not, not if like. I don't know, let's say that you're doing lettering and tomorrow there is a trend of doing little characters. So don't leave lettering aside. Mm, that's, yeah. that's bad because that's who you are. So just bring the, the little characters into your lettering if you want. You don't, you can try and see maybe what happens, you know? So so that that's that's a bit what I'm saying, that, that, that trends, maybe you shouldn't like follow trends blindly. Um, yeah. But maybe it's good to be aware of them, you know, and right. and and kind of using them or like, you know, there is like all these TikTok brands on, you know, like how to explain things, you know, like hey, here is this or or like these dances that they are pointing. <laughs> right. Yeah. I don't. I never did that. I I think I'll never do it. But like, if you want to grow your business and if you want to be like on trend, 
somehow you can just talk about the things you talk all the time but like kind of you know you could you could try you know it's it's i don't think yeah it's yeah as long as you don't lose your soul you know doing it. <laughs> yeah no i i think that's that's really good like basically being aware of trends but i think the the danger would be in someone especially um beginning designer graphic designer whatever really trying to nail down their style and you know the the fear would be like you making a decision that says i'm just gonna i'm gonna wait for this next trend and that's gonna be my style or like i'm gonna wait for the next couple yeah. of trends pick the best one that one's really popular so that's gonna kind of hmm. isolate my style and yeah i mean i don't know a ton of my design friends that were like that i could that i could like pinpoint like that was a trend you know what i mean like they may be yeah. doing some things that are trendy in their style that they in their style and yeah. they kind of like to do but i would never be like yep 20 you know 2002 you you are just you 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 did the like crazy big block 3d logo thing yeah. like game tag gamer tag thing or whatever and then yeah. like all of your work is is just that you know like yeah. Or, or whatever might be a bad example but i don't think no, I but have, i understand yeah yeah i don't have tons of friends that were like uh oh, you're just like riding this trend thing because that's really dangerous because just like people are wishy-washy trends are really wishy-washy you know and yeah, so yeah. what what could be popular for like uh you know a week two weeks this is kind of this TikTok thing you're describing um yeah. really endangers you a little bit in the artistic world um for sure and it distracts you you know it's like it's like you know if you go for a trip you know and you're you're going to a city if you it's it's nice to stop here and there you know but if you stop 50 times you'll never get to the city so it feels like <laughs> yeah. you, you know you're gonna maybe have fun but like you're gonna spend a lot of time a lot of money and gas a lot of energy you know so which is which is cool by the way i'm not saying it's not yeah you know, but but for example, like if you want to master a style, just just go for it, you know. And because if you go for it and then you stop at all the trends, that like then your goal will never, you know, you you you'll never grasp that goal because it's just not gonna happen. Yeah, no, so, I, I think I think that's that's really important. Like like you're saying is just like go for it because, um, yeah. you know, I have had a lot of friends um, say, you know, like yeah, try they're like yeah I just tried everything like I just tried out a lot of things and they didn't spend endless hours they just were like you know this prompt or this whatever this concept yes. whatever try out these different styles but I really like what um you know uh, a big YouTube teacher Sean Cannell says is like you know if you chase you know nine rabbits you, you get none of them you know what I mean so it, you, That's you, exactly you see that. like so go after the one rabbit you know set the trap for the one rabbit and get really good at at the thing that you're and knowing really the rabbit at. yeah and yeah, yeah. and, and you're, you're like you studied this rabbit you know yeah, their exactly. tactics you know what they you know like the moves. To eat. yeah yeah you know their moves you know where to set the trap and it's like <laughs> without without maybe you want to be friends with the rabbit maybe getting a little too dark but <laughs> <laughs> like you know what I mean like you want to catch this rabbit for whatever reason and you want to be good at at this style and so i think being really passionate about it like when i found this this kind of whole vintage world of just beautiful letters that i was kind of blind to because i went to a very traditional style school that didn't really uh you know didn't like, really value graphic design yeah i was just like this is it like i just really and passionate about this thing which is really what's brought me here to talk to you you know you have a thought yeah. so go ahead <laughs> yeah i think that's really important as well because i think like if you if you're trying to be like okay let's there is 10 styles on the table and i'm just gonna pick this because i think um, clients are gonna come to me or because it's trendy mm. or because because my friends yes. are doing it or because like these big names in instagram are like going after it i think yes. i think you'll never get anywhere so you can you can uh you can literally like like this is a bad example okay so but, don't, <laughs> but like you can literally like hit your head to the wall and become the best at hitting your you know you can actually make money <laughs> yeah, out of, okay, yeah, out of yeah. hitting your head on the wall you know because because you can become the best so i'm like the the styles is sort of the same you know like just mm. just 
you have to and and that's exactly what what you were saying that you have to feel passionate about it because if you're just trying to 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 get all that and you don't really like it like if you're really if you're really passionate about flat design or like if you really like go to Behance or like to Instagram and mm. and you're like saving some sort of thing all the time maybe that's what you should do you know and again yeah, yeah good I think you have to and a lot of like this is the thing that 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 I see the most is patience like people don't have patience okay. and I think because a lot of a lot of people would say you know to to big names like for example let's talk about Toby right um if you if you see his style you're like oh my god this guy is so talented and I'm people would say he's so talented right that would yeah. be the normal thought Absolutely. but then I would be no he's he's really like he's really spent a lot of time there he's yeah. really passionate maybe but you know not just talented like he wasn't born like this for sure he spent hours <laughs> like like for sure yeah. like i i picture his room and i see like all these little you know um yeah. retro packagings and and books and he's Lots been studying books. typography and illustration and like when you see what he does he spent like oh my god like a lot of time and a lot of creatives wouldn't spend that much time to get better uh, and, or like to 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 be to get to that point but i think he was really passionate about it and then that allowed him you know more energy to spend time and become the best at what he does which probably he is because he's super talented so yeah but it's no, just I, time yeah it's it's like you said there's no shortcut i mean people want the shortcut you know i even catch myself sometimes like most of the time it's during a project i think i don't think i ever sit down to draw something and i go like Gosh, what's what's the shortcut because i'm just practicing but yeah. i catch myself sometimes like you can always type in in the in the search bar or youtube like fastest way to draw hands or whatever and you know i've done it before because you get this little thing and you're like oh okay there's a cool neat little hack i could do and it's like everything's if you got to like learn to to view all those things as tools because if you try to just isolate that as the definitive like authority then you're going to get really behind i think so it like yes if you're always looking for the fast track thing um you know it, it, be, it can become the slow one you know because yeah um let's because if we talk about tools um you, you know the, there is um like i was designing in kittle before right and right. And, and you know i i started designing in kittle um because i've been in contact with you guys for a while and i even sell products through 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 heritage type and yep. all that and and um and i really wanted to 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 start using kittle because i i find it that it's like a perfect tool um you know to design any kind of stuff and and i was there two months ago and and even though it's like super easy it's like the ui is perfect you get there and you get set up really easily especially if you if you use any kind of software like vectors or illustrator right. or whatever yeah you get there and you're like okay let's do it but and and that was like okay yeah i'm going to design something in five minutes but it took me an hour why because i didn't <laughs> because I, i i was trying to find the shortcut i was trying to find the fast way would be just open and doing right um sure but today for example i was like okay um since i have the chat with you guys i'm going to design something um so i went to the app and and then i started seeing the possibilities first and then i I got my sketching notes and I started like, you know, okay, yeah. I want to do something like that in these colors. I kind of like thought about a color palette that would work. I did, okay, like the 3D of the letters could be here and there. And mm. instead of this, I could do that and flowers here, flowers there. So I did like a fast sketch. Maybe it took me like, I don't know, 15 minutes, but my brain already knew what I wanted to do. Um, so I went to Kittle and and I designed it in like 40 minutes. I, I, I designed the poster, right? So again, um, sometimes trying to find a shortcut or just going and doing the stuff, it's it's worse than just, you know, sit down and like plan yeah. it and structure it. And it's going to take you more time. But I think in the end of the process, it's going to look better. And, and you, you know, you eventually going to yeah. become better because it's all about process, I think. So, yeah. And, that, and that's like perfectly translates to finding your style, because if you just open up and let's say yeah let's say you're opening up the design softwares whatever you use and you're like okay and then you just pull up a bunch of stuff to <laughs> to copy you know you're not gonna you're not gonna find your your style and so you have to be patience i think so far has been our key 
like our, our key guiding so. light is like you just got to be patient and like i just i was definitely getting frustrated a lot of times because i wanted to do cool work and i just wasn't that good yet you know and you're not you know there's going to be a period of time where you're not super confident in yourself like you said you're very scared of color you know already which yeah. is difficult very very difficult for a lot of designers to figure out palette and color theory and whatever sure. but like just in capability alone there's lots of times and still times where i'm like this is really intimidating and it's because i feel like we have fast track minds we got to get this done i got to make sure the style is right whatever and it's like if you just like relax give yourself more time more breathing room more time to just study and like find what you like then there comes that patience and then you can get better with the process like you're trying things and you're nailing it down right exactly like, exactly and i think like you shouldn't see like for example if you're following someone that you love uh the work of like you're you're, you're following whoever and you're like okay let's 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 do this well mm. you have to understand that in order to to do, for this person in order to do this they did a lot before so they right. they, they, <laughs> they learned that and they learned that so if you want to do a lettering composition first you gotta you gotta learn about lettering styles and mm. and serifs and optical you know like you know all this kind of yeah your anatomy of letters and stuff like yeah. all of the stuff yeah that's why like oh what can i do to become better at my craft well first of all like see where it comes from like study mm. study basics you know try to understand what are you doing because if you start putting letters obviously it's not gonna look nice so kind of like again right to find your style just break it down like break it down like what do what try to be in their mind in the mind that, that of that person that you adore you know like what did they do to get here like That's maybe really maybe great. even like a practice that i did a lot was um go to their instagram and scroll down and go to like six years ago that's gonna tell you that mm -hmm. they they were not good like, <laughs> they started not, somewhere else <laughs> like not not i mean i'm not saying that, that like everybody was bad like some people no, yeah, yeah, yeah. start somewhere else because of life experiences whatever but but i think um scrolling down kind of mm, puts in perspective like how did they get there right so you 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 can you can kind of study okay so they you know i can see how the style progresses like yeah, i can see right. that before they they didn't use color and they they maybe like focused more on the shape of the lettering so copy that do that like just go ahead and try to you know kind of follow like yeah yeah so yeah i don't know i don't know i think I'm. yeah no that's that's <laughs> that honestly was gonna be my uh not next question but next thought was like uh the pros and cons or i guess maybe dangers and benefits of like uh following you know your mentors or i mean i call them mentors you may not even know these people but the the people that you yeah. look up to for example on instagram or behance or wherever is you know what what do you really do with that and i think you're already kind of hitting the nail on the head already is like no don't don't take the most recent thing that's already beautiful and amazing and they took years to learn and be like yep let me go replicate that style um but really an another thing sean cannell says is success leaves clues right so right. success leaves clues so you you're saying go back Wh where did it come from which is really important and yeah. go back trace it back then start practicing if you can start where your what, what should i call I, uh, mentors isn't the right word but like you're we, we call them exemplars in like english school basically uh, uh like a perfect, exemplar yeah yeah yeah, yeah perfect yeah. example kind of makes sense um yeah. yeah we yeah so like whoever your exemplars are like if you can figure out how they got good uh you know you can go back start there and then somewhere on that path you're gonna find this other cool style that's yours I think um, for sure like because you're gonna you're gonna be like oh I see how that that's cool I want to do something like that but like I think it'd be cool like this you know and it's like those are the moments where you as a beginning designer whether it's just you playing an illustrator or playing in Kittle with all the assets that we have or lettering on your iPad um any of those trains of thoughts like when you find those moments where you're like oh that's 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 cool but 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 actually I, I i saw this other thing and i kind of want to do it like that and then it's like oh ding 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 you're starting to get into this this style where 
like you said earlier, you're going to start kind of leaving this stamp, so to speak. Like exactly. You can start seeing work and you're like, oh, yeah, looks like Drew designed that or oh, looks like Jimbo designed that or this lettering definitely looks like Toby did it or whatever. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah, that I think that that's really, really important is to definitely have those exemplars, those, you know, maybe I don't know if they're celebrities, some some influencers, <laughs> some, on some of them, are. you know, some of them are going to be really big time, yeah. you know, whatever. And you want to follow them and follow their work, but don't copy work. You know, I think that's obvious to say, but we need to, I think, say it, you know, don't don't just copy work and like adjust a couple things and then like it, you know, I think here not... comes, it comes something like like the book. Yeah. Who did this book? Still, still like an artist. Yes. I got yeah. this book like 10 years ago. I've got it upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's got one copy, I think. But yeah, uh, <laughs> it's the best, you know, like, yeah, you, no, it's good. you don't want to you don't want to get the style of a person and just trying to imitate it, you know, try to try to get a lot of style, try to try to see a lot of, you know, different things that that that, that you like and kind of and again, print it out put notes on it, be like, okay, so they use this kind of letters. Can I maybe, you know, put them together with the other, like study, like study, mm. dissect it. And then, cause like you, you can, you can, you know, like you get all, all this inspiration in Pinterest, whatever on Behance, then you kind of distill it, you know, you, you kind of get what you like the most. And then, you, you know, it kind of passes a filter. And then from this filter, you can just create your your own stuff so yeah because I, i've seen a lot of people that they're, they're like oh I, I i love i love this person's style and they don't look at anything else and that's wrong because then they just mm. you know you're just gonna do what they do but bad that's, <laughs> that's really good yeah because that's no, the yeah. way it is i mean yeah no that's really good i i i really love that is like yeah don't don't like purposefully blind yourself right don't don't yeah. purposefully put the blinders on and think that you know this is the right way or this is the only way such dangerous things to do because like because yeah. either everybody's right or everybody's wrong there is no you know it's all a, it, it's a lot of things are opinion okay. anyway so don't do that you know definitely like yeah print it out study it make all these mood boards and like yeah i mean it's not like that's going to be your definitive thing it's not like you're going to make a mood board from Pinterest and Behance and it's like okay I like these three colors and every project will be those three colors like and that's it yeah and that's and that's it like if I do this style I'll do that style but it's going to be these three colors you know so it's yeah. like that would be pretty dangerous I think yeah. um one thing we, I, I just, yeah, have, just have just have one little thing but I think when it comes to style as well we have to realize that it's not just what they draw or or like you, it's. I think it would be a mistake to think that these people that we look uh, like that that we perceive as mentors or like the you know the the reference that yeah that is, uh, um, these people also have a life right so so yeah. and and what I want to say with that is like um, most of my style I think has changed um, depending on like people I met. Uh, especially my my partner, my 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 partner and girlfriend, you know, um, who's like a super colorful person. So I think after meeting her, I also kind of like, like you know, she was like not afraid of colors, and then that wow. that gave me, you know, I started Courage, like yeah. being like around her, and she's super, you know, uh, energetic and and happy, and like you know, and I and I think I got that thing, and I kind of got rid of my you know black and white kind of like dark side, <laughs> whatever you right, want to call yeah. it. But, but um, also like. You know, um, I remember this trip I did to to Amsterdam, okay. and and I was like wandering around, and I was just like, you know, mesmerized, but like by 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 all these little, you know, like signages or like these little, you know, numbers on the doors, and and I was taking photos, mm -hmm. and then and yeah, then I was like, yeah. oh, look at these textures, maybe we can do a brush set with these textures, and then I got home, and then I started doing like. You know, it kind of like evolved, but from a real life situation, not just exactly. from me staring at the screen like, okay, let's see what what can we copy, you know, so that's important. Too. Yeah, no, I think that's really, yeah, that's, that's awesome. And it made me start thinking about like, man, did I have any like scenarios like that? And I think I did because when I, you know, s similarly in terms of style, when I really wanted to start getting better at just vintage stuff in general yeah. whether it was just lettering or like designing 
type in Illustrator or making a label or just a logo, I started getting like tons of vintage stuff. I was going antiquing. I even have like, I keep stuff on my desk of like just super old stuff. If I turn my camera around, you'll see like I have a vintage mailer from like the 20s. Like I was going antiquing and then, awesome. you know, talking with my wife, we were like, let's go to a super old city up in the mountains. And because they have like one of the biggest antique shops, it's like four floors or something. So we went there, same thing, taking pictures, taking pictures of cans, buying little, little knickknacks, like old lead boxes of like super old. Go. And it's like, and I was like, man, how can I take these things and like, again, put my own little twist on it, not copy, but like, I love this layout. It's, it's very nice and symmetric. The form, the shape is good. And it's like, how do I start doing that with my own or, or even color? Like you said, like, like the, like vintage stuff is, is very kind of, um, muted maybe, uh, maybe it's yeah. kind of singular, like two or three colors, but they're just beautiful and Still. they're really interesting, you know? And it's like, this green is like so wild. Like, why does this green and this cream, like, you know what I mean? And so you just, you get inspired, I think, to spark that, whatever that style is. For sure. <laughs> I can't call it anything else. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, again, like, and especially like what you said, you know, you have a, you said uh, some mailer from the 20s, something you said, I, I like that you have to show me after, by the way. Um, yeah, I will show you to use right here. <laughs> okay, cool. So, so yeah, just like as well, like if you like a style, surround yourself with it, you know, put, put stuff in your house, kind of like try to, yes. try to, try to maybe like, because that's gonna, you know, uh, I like flowers a lot. Right. And, um, yeah. and, and like, maybe I didn't use them lately, but it's something that I want to come back to. Right. And people are like, but how, how, you know, why do you put flowers around? And I was like, because I caught myself going into the woods and taking photos of flowers and, 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 wow. you know, and, and, and seeing the, you know, the, like, kind of like the, the, the natural shapes of the leaves, like, you know, mm. and then I'm like, oh, this is kind of like, like, like in the Art Nouveau, that's how yes. they did it. Right. So they, they got inspired by nature and they started doing these things. So I was like, wait, if, if I'm taking photos of flowers, just because I like it maybe i can use these photos and kind of like studying the flowers and see how they behave and mm -hmm. and then i started like covering blank spaces in my lettering compositions with flowers and perfect and then that's it you know it again this is a uh, uh, something that that i that i like doing you know it's the same like if you if you i don't know you you go to the street and you like cars and you start taking photos of cars cars maybe yeah you can use those shapes of cars or maybe you can you know start doing posters like with like car themed posters and I mean that's maybe not the best example but yeah, like but you get it you know like yeah you know like, vintage bicycles or you know or like whatever it might be you know so so i think yeah just go go to the streets and kind of just don't sit because i think the worst thing that people can do when finding their style is just like sit in front of the computer for eight hours and be like it's gonna come it, one day try to figure it out <laughs> you know? yeah 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 no it's that's exactly right i was just in um I was telling you on, on email, we were in so many countries. I was just in Italy for, yeah for five days. And like, man, if you want to, <laughs> I'm not telling everybody they have to uh, buy a plane ticket to Rome or anything, but if you want to sure. get inspired, <laughs> if you want to get up out of the seat and not look at the computer and get really inspired with just art and, and, and textures, by the way, and architecture, oh yeah like, man, it's like, it's unreal. And you, you'll be. I've never had such an urge where I'm like, I want to sit down right here and create, and start drawing, but you can't because there's like 500,000 people around. They're all pushing <laughs> you and you're all like this, take pictures and it's like crazy. But, but it's that, it's that feeling where it's like, man, later when I have some like downtime, I'm going to like just draw shapes or whatever. Like it's like, could be for nothing. You know what I mean? And it's like moments like that, like you're saying, go out in the street or you know safely obviously or whatever maybe it's architecture you're into and you you know you love drawing buildings or whatever yeah just yeah. go just research the thing but don't try not to stand in front of the computer and look at uh you know 2d images i guess like go out and like walk around the thing like you're saying with the flowers like if you always look at flat pictures of flowers you're always going to draw flat pictures of flowers more or less I yeah guess. So yeah. like go out and like look at the flowers and like yeah whatever. I think just take a them, walk yeah. in general is like <laughs> like take a walk I mean, in general. <laughs> I mean some people might not like to walk, but they can they can also grab a motorcycle, they can go for a coffee yeah. somewhere. You know, I, I get inspired a lot in coffee places, you know. I I, I sit yeah. down there, I put my podcast, 
and and I'm and I'm there like for example my 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 sketching sessions are most most of them are in coffee places. Okay. I'm never I'm never in the office or uh, right now I'm I'm working not from the studio but because I'm in Barcelona I'm working yeah. in a co-working space. Um, so most of my sketching sessions are in, you know, in, in a nice coffee place with a nice flat white, you know, and I'm just sitting there. Yeah, somewhere like, out, you know, people are around, you know, yeah. People around, like there's life happening, you know, you can, you can see these, these several things, you know, passing by and you're listening to, to podcasts or like maybe to some music you like. And somehow, like you get the feeling of that city and Barcelona is a perfect example because you get okay. this, this like nice feeling of it, you know, and maybe, you know. Maybe you just walked by a nice door with like some Art Nouveau thing, and you like. There you and go. You, for me, I feel so inspired in the city, you know. So, yeah. so yeah, just just go out, and and again, if you're not trying to find the style and you want to find it today, it's not gonna happen, and and you just yeah. have to 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 have patience. I want to I want to talk about this. There's um, just one little thing. Um, sorry, man, I got excited. No, um, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> There is this. Um, there is an example, like when it comes to, for example, finding colors and how to use colors and how to become better at color palettes and like, you know, all this. Um, um, in my products, uh, in the beginning, and now I don't do it much anymore. But like, I think in like six or seven products, I was giving color palettes, right? Okay. And if you guys used uh, any any you know whatever software for like where you can put um, like different colors. For example, like I use Procreate, right? And there is like, I, I would say every color palette that Procreate gives you has like 30 slots of like little right. little cool. squares, cool. you know? Watches, yeah. So what we did, uh, Tea and I, was, um, okay, so if you like, because I, I believe like, as you said before, if you want to get good at color, you have to start with a simple color palette. You can start, again, if you want to do a vintage, a vintage thing, like, you you have to like get like these three greens they're using and then kind of figuring out like when to use the dark when to use the mid tones mm. and when to use the highlights right so yeah. what we did was like to create these color palettes and we said there is five color palettes included okay inside the color palettes we gave five or six colors instead of giving the whole and that's what a lot of people do when they sell products they you know they put all these colors i'm so sorry my no my, worries my watch started talking so so what we did was okay let's let's give them a short color palette and let's let's teach them let, let's teach them how to you know like Use put these this five, color here yeah. this color here and this color here and then you know how to you know get better at it by by going like you know small first yeah and we got a lot of mails of people saying hey but you said that there is um there is five color palettes but here i just see like let's say like one you know because like they were all they were uh, all not filled up you know so so then kind of like i was i was telling them like yeah but the color palette doesn't mean that it has to have 30 colors just because procreate says yeah, so yeah yeah you know yeah, absolutely, so absolutely. for me a color palette can be two colors three colors four colors so yeah, i think like absolutely. again to get better at color if you get 30 colors you just won't understand what's happening. So it's no. better to understand how to balance out two colors and then how to shade those. And, and then a highlight you know? maybe, yeah. And then, exactly. And then after, after like, let's say, after you did this exercise 10 times, then you can add another color and another color and another color. And in the end, your brain is kind of gonna, is gonna get used to the whole, you know, um, you know, kind of like the, this mathematics or, or how to, you know, put colors. Yeah, the theory and of colors, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I so mean, just, yeah, yeah. That I mean, it's it's really important to not, yeah, just look at how kind of maybe mathematical or how machines kind of say like oh, it's thirty slots. You know, I, I don't think I ever, I don't think I know any super successful brands that use more than like a couple colors, right? So yeah, exactly, if you really want to see how some really successful companies function just with their branding i've looked at lots of branding style guides like at previous companies i worked for making the website we always get a we always get their brand style guide right and it's like 40 pages a lot of it's kind of not worth anything but the first five or six <laughs> is like the brand the type the colors i've seen a cup one or two that have like eight and there's like a subset of grays there's like three grays right and they're like here's where you would use this gray and you're like okay i guess that's fine 
uh, you know what I mean? But like for the yeah. most part, if you look at that field, that's like these these three grays, and then yeah. this is like the red, and then this is like the orange or whatever that plays along. It's like it's really three. You know, not saying you always have to use three, but like if you look at other companies, I, I highly doubt they're using thirty palettes. Or even if you look at a really beautiful floral composition, much like yours, there's still I don't think. 30 colors there might be shades and shading of subsets of colors to create depth and things like that but i don't know if i could isolate like 31 32 33 like color. that would be just like that would be crazy would and, be and again yeah it's like oh okay i'm starting at lettering um and i'm doing a piece let's put six lettering styles well no <laughs> like no. <laughs> just just start with one start with one and <laughs> you know like chill down you know like it's gonna be fine just start with one and then once you master it maybe you can add a couple you know but 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 it's always like that it's it's always not to get overwhelmed when you start and uh, i think mm, that that's really good that's yeah. together with your style or that's together with like the colors you're using or or everything just start like for example one of the one of the pieces that that i did i think i did it yesterday i wanted to to kind of like add this kind of chrome style to a lettering piece that i did and obviously i had to study a lot of you know chrome kind of like lights and shadows and I it's see, crazy see, yeah. when you get there you're like oh my god like that i cannot do this but then if you kind of like break it down you kind of see that okay i'm gonna start with two colors mm. you know a neutral color the shadow and the light and, the okay, and yeah. then i'm gonna add a new layer and i'm gonna add a new color boom i'm gonna put it there does mm, it look good okay. no change the saturation oh this this looks kind of okay okay let's add second lights and then in the end, I think I, I ended up with like 12 colors, but again, it kind of like built up, you know, on top but of like, each other. Right. Yeah, exactly. So my basic palette was like two colors and then I was feeling comfortable, you know, so for a Latin composition is the same. So if you have like, I don't know, like if you have three words and two words are one color and the other one is in the other, maybe like try to get a fourth and kind of like, you know, put some dots here and some dots mm. there. Does it look good? Yeah, no, you know, you can add another one and another one and another one, but like, just you know just take yeah, it easy start with the, start with the two you know like start with Build the up. the simple up, yeah. yeah exactly yeah I, I think that's great um one thing i did want to um talk about again just briefly kind of as we come to the as we start landing the plane here is if if there are um you know i think i might be remiss if i didn't mention a couple resources that actually will help you know they will help you get better as a designer or artist or uh, letter or what, whatever it is. Mm. And I think, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of start and then kind of let you think for a second on like what, what resources would be good? Like, is there a book someone really needs to read? It doesn't even have to be uh, technical or analytical. It can just be like motivational. But I think that like my advice that I've had to fight with is like, don't be super afraid to like just buy a class if it interests you. Because I think most of the time I've never really encountered like a design class that's super expensive and it's always been valuable like to yeah. me or like I was really hesitant. My wife and I were kind of hesitant, like, should we really buy Skillshare? Like, are we going to use it that often? And honestly, we don't. But the times that we do, I can always go on there like I was doing something I needed to know. I needed to get a little bit better at Acanthus drawing and I just wanted to see. I was like, I just want to see. And there's really not a lot on there, but there's this one lady that's breaking down like the most simple shape of the acanthus. And it was great. Like from there, I can like just do my simple shapes. And then like you're saying with layering, I can just go on and I can start trying to add shade. I can start trying exactly. to add hatch, whatever. And so like, yeah, I, I, I don't want us to go through this whole thing and not mention a couple of resources that will actually help you find your style and get better at uh, design. I do think Skillshare is a thing that will help you. I don't think it's necessary. Um, but like, what, what, what would you think? Like if you wanted to point some people, maybe they're beginners or maybe they're in the middle of their journey, still trying to like, what the heck is my style? Like, <laughs> are there some books or resources or like things like that? Anything that you would think of? Okay, well, let's start. Um, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a big list because no, yeah, um, sure. it feels like um, I should actually, you know, sit down and kind of see what, compile a list. <laughs> yeah, compile what 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 I used in the past. But I can tell you a couple. For example, 
Um, my best friend um, has a company called Lettering Daily. I don't know if you came across their work, but uh, Maybe. his name is Max and, and he's doing uh, this um, tutorials for beginners and he really breaks it down to like, you know, the essentials and like he's got this like huge blogs where he, you know, um, explains everything like little by little and it's for free. So, wow, so that's great. It's, it's for free. So he, he's got this blog and I think um, right now he's got like around, I would say like 50 articles. He's also got like a YouTube channel that he started two years ago. So that like for me, lettering daily would be if you have to start somewhere, that's that's something that you can uh, definitely go to. Then when it comes to books, um, obviously you said like, you know, you can you can read things that inspire you. Like you can, mm -hmm. you know, you can get a book from Neil Gaiman and kind of like by by understanding what he says and like by experiencing the, the, the you know, the, the sci-fi thing, you can maybe get ideas from there because like you can sure. disconnect from your work. And I think that's really important, you know, to mm. kind of like, not every time you read should be like, you know, business or lettering or like, because that's going to Yeah, exactly. Well. It's all analytic. Yeah, all technical. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, if, since we're talking about lettering, I would probably buy, th there is like the classics, you know, and the, like the basics. So authors like Louis Philly, who is, oh, yeah. uh, you know, Fantastic. an old time master, like she's, well, she's probably like, one of the people that has been more in, like for more time in the game, probably. Um, then there is uh, I would get something from House Industries, Ken Barber. That's very, gold. very good. Yeah. That to see the process of these guys is just mind blowing. Then I would go maybe and get a book by Martina Flor. Also great. Also really good then i would get maybe if you're more into calligraphy i would get one book by ivan castro who's a mm. spanish lettering artist that's also really good then i would probably get the book that jessica hish put out like seven that's a great books. one yeah i have that one that, that is a good one as well um and then you know i would i would probably probably say as well that maybe you can get like classics you know like for example i got this um i was in a book fair and i found this um and i found this book by by tashin uh i think it's this is it the german brand or something well it doesn't matter maybe? but like they do editions of like you know classics and there okay. is like oh yes i know so, what you're talking about I, I can send you later it's so good okay it's yeah. white and it has like different type on top Yes, and yeah, it, and it's like it's a you know a bible of like how like they used right. to do it in the past, and there's like ornaments and this and that. So mm -hmm. I believe like sometimes just like by 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 you know by walking and, and you you know you find like one old bookstore and you can you can find like these inspirational typography books that are like super super good. Um, and then I I think so I I said website and I said. Um, um, and I said books, then there is a lot of platforms that, that, you know, can, can, yeah. can kind of like give you inspiration, you know, like, as I said, lettering days, or like, you can go to good type, you can go to typism as well. Yep. Um, Always typism great. also, I was a part of the, of their, um, summit last week and there were like all these free classes as well. And, and I think there's a lot of value to get from there also to kind of talk about something that, that it's similar to Skillshare um i would say domestica is kind of okay too um, is good too yeah yeah i also have a i did a course with them um it was a really good experience and i think um based on on the work that i had to put on the table and the price that these courses are especially like if you're trying to buy something in like christmas or mm, they do a lot yeah. of discounts all the time you know so maybe you know if you go for black friday you can like find courses for like five dollars and there are courses that really like you know um they tell you like the process how to start you know yeah how to you know and there's a lot when it comes to lettering there's a ton and, on there yes and typography and also and now i'm gonna plug my own stuff <laughs> <laughs> go for it go for it shamelessly i'm gonna go i'm gonna do and do that um there is uh we did we did three products that kind of kind of like can help you as well um one is called the kickoff lettering toolbox that that it's a it's a procreate 
kind of like toolbox and has like a 200 page workbook that guides you like from like you know it teaches you how to do like cal cal calligraphy from start and and different letters sans and, and serif from start you know it kind of builds up and it gives you yeah. like a way to to color your pieces to to add ornaments serifs it can guide you there and then we have a couple more that is uh, one is because it's kind of like we this is the first we did and then we felt like okay let's expand the, more, the yeah, layout the layout thing yeah so then we did one called this the slayer lettering masterclass and that takes you like over um lettering composition and how to cover blank spaces and what styles and whatnot and then we did the the one that we put out two weeks ago that's called the easy 3d builder and that's mm. a step further like how to how to get like you know um from a flat uh letter to a 3d one to how 3D to add letter. shadows and lights yeah. there's a lot of video tutorials there too so so yeah that, <laughs> yeah that's that's a little bit what I what I would maybe do. And sorry for plugging my stuff. No, <laughs> no, it's totally fine. And I think we sell two of those on Heritage Type. Maybe all of them. I'm not. I'm not sure. I think we sell two of them. I know we sell yes. the, the letter. The kickoff for sure. Kickoff, I yeah. think for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we for do. For sure, you can find it in Heritage. Yeah. Not this yeah. layout and the other one because uh, I, it's a collaboration with Design Cuts. But, okay, gotcha, but yeah. you can find the kickoff in, in Heritage and also like a bundle with it for like with your Yeah, guys. there's there's like yeah, there I mean there's, there's a couple there's bundles. So much yeah. stuff. I, I, I was like I got I, I got it and was like overwhelmed with the like the size of it. It's like five gigs or something, and I like put it on yeah. my iPad and I was like, if you really wanna talk about patience, like there go you through go. that <laughs> thing and, and see what you can try to do, and you're like, man. I don't think I'll ever use all of these, but that's okay. These. Like that's, that's the point is like, you know, you're not supposed to use every single wireframe. You're not supposed to use every single flourish. You're not supposed to use every single dot or whatever, but Definitely. no, that's, that's a, it's, those are great. Especially if you are trying to get better at lettering or, or just composition in general, like you mentioned, like composition and layout, I think are very, um, very important, big things that we see a lot of designers struggle with we see the intent yeah. is really good we see the theme coming through but uh symmetry hierarchy things like that are seem to be very difficult um but it's not it doesn't have to be right, right? it's it's and, i mean doesn't have to be it is it can be. <laughs> right yeah. exactly that that yeah thanks for the yeah but again <laughs> like just just build up right that's what we have been saying the whole time yeah yeah, and, and just a couple other uh, books that I think would be really important to add to your repertoire for everyone mm -hmm. watching is these older compilation books just kind of throughout the throughout the years. So I have several. You mentioned Louise Philly. I have one, um, I think, that's also in conjunction with Stephen Heller, also another yes, kind most of, of master, them are. Mm -hmm. master composition. Uh, I have one that's just called Vintage design and it's just it, it's it's not trying to teach you how to uh, do vintage design so don't don't think you're buying a book and it's gonna like open it up and it's like step one be a vintage designer like it's yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's inspiration another another one that i absolutely love i think i go to it for almost every product uh, every design project i do is called junk type um yes i can't, I've seen I can't exactly mm -hmm. remember the author right now but that one is literally just pictures like someone has compiled pictures just jpegs throughout the years all the way back before like the 20s 30s and 40s up through roughly maybe the 60s and they're just like all kinds of american design design internationally whatever and they're just pictures of logos or a tote bag or packaging or whatever from like yeah. back in the day and so again to kind of talk about layout composition those are great books to 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 study right and i don't you know they they're gonna definitely help you on your they helped me on my journey as to style and i know friends i have lots of friends that have those books and they don't do really any vintage stuff they don't really do vintage lettering or vintage type or whatever they do very nice clean organic maybe i would call it elegant i have a lot of friends that elegant. do this kind of elegant uh yeah. not times new roman but you know really really sharp serifs um high-end they, they kind of do high-end brand stuff like boutique mm -hmm. and soap and stuff but
but they still have those books. Why? Because the compositions are just phenomenal. Like these yeah. guys back in the day didn't have Illustrator. So they were doing exactly what you said to do at the beginning, which was sit down with a daggone piece of paper and like draw a little box and fill that box with, uh, you know, shapes and then fill those shapes with <laughs> with words and then like figure out your composition. You know, I feel like That's I just really have another, important, box yeah. of another box inside of another box. Inside. Anyway, like patience, we're, we're still this whole thing. I'm just going to name the title of this video, how to be patient, right? Because patience. like, <laughs> that's, what's going to really help you nail, nail this down. Right. Like, yeah, for sure. For sure. And, and yeah, yeah. I, lo I love the way you were, you were putting it right now, you know, like, like they would spend, I, I think, I think the, the most important part is like set up your pieces before you actually mm. do the pieces. So if, you, because if you want to go and, and, and like, do the thing fast it's not gonna happen <laughs> yeah. but like these people were like you know in front of a paper and and as you said just filling up things so they feel comfortable with it and and you know like thinking about there's a lot of ways to do composition obviously but yeah this is the way like for example the, the way i teach uh well and a lot of people do like lettering composition so like first write the sentence understand the sentence exactly circle the words that are more so important the, yes and those are gonna be bigger those bigger are gonna be words. important yep. Emphasis. Get away from the piece. Do you read what it says? Do you read the, the main concept because the bigger words are the important ones? Yeah, okay, you're good, you know? So, like, instead of just being there, like, okay, like, this word is going to be here on an arch, and then this one's going to be like that, and this one... No. So, just, yeah, uh, just, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, the, I think the phrase goes, like, um, a failure... Uh, let's see, I think it's a failure to plan is a plan to fail or something like that right okay. so like if you, if you really yeah if you fail if you fail to plan if if you fail to plan you plan to fail that's what it is so it's like yeah if you open up illustrator even kittle maybe whatever and you are staring there and you have no plan but you're gonna you probably will inevitably fail so if you have an idea in your head like you said you were like i had an idea in my head what i wanted to do i opened up kittle Ah, just wasn't like i mean it's just like there's too much stuff in there almost like you could add some type you could start adding some illustrations moving around you're like oh this doesn't feel good but if you create what's i guess what would we call maybe a storyboard just kind of a sketched out a rough rough idea a rough plan yeah. then you are you're planning to succeed right sure. so like almost every design project i have two or three open right now just on the side um i never i never go start drawing i like just go start looking at illustrations or whatever and then what i might do is i'll take i'll take screen captures or if i'm out i'll take pictures of my phone and then i'll kind of start putting those together and i'll be like yeah man i love this <clears throat> if it's an illustration piece which i'm doing right now i like man, i loved that hat but i really like the belt on that you know what i mean and you just start kind of like putting these pictures side by side and it's yeah. like if i had just opened up my if i had just opened up procreate because that's what i like to sketch in and i just was like ah, okay i know the illustration's got to be da 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 i know it's got to be stepping on a snake whatever and i just try to go at it man i'll waste four or five hours for sure <laughs> right you you will you will yeah. just you will and, and I, i've done that before and you just erase it and you just erase it and then you delete the layer and you just erase it and you're like none of this feels good because you don't know what you're doing right so you like, don't know what you're doing you don't know what you're doing so and the same thing applies to style if you open it up and you're just trying to recall these styles and they're all it's almost just like so much in your head and it won't come out right so it's like yeah you gotta you know, yeah there's this thing that i that i do every year like i think around this time like august you know that it's kind of it's summer i'm not i'm not working as much i'm kind of like mm. trying to you know keep it down because i know september october november are going to be crazy. crazy so now like i've been kind of in a in a self-exploratory season where i am dedicating more time to to again go for a coffee and kind of like get stuff that that i really like and things that i want to learn not necessarily just about typography but about illustration about whatever and i do mood boards exactly that's what you said you just put them one like one picture next to the other because if you go to instagram and save pictures like you're gonna see one you're gonna be like oh this is cool and then you're gonna go to the next one and it's gonna be like oh but maybe i could do this but you already forgot what you saw before so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right so i guess that's important what you say to just put them you know one next to the other and kind of 
sketch on them and be like, oh my God, I can, I can use this here. I can use that there. And, you know, but like, you have to see it all at once because otherwise it's just, you know, you yeah, you don't remember. It. Yeah. No, you just, it's just like, if you scroll Instagram, it's the same thing. You're not learning. Sometimes I'm, sometimes in the night I'm doing it, you know, and they're like, oh my God, I love this. Oh, may maybe tomorrow for this piece, I could do this. And then I start scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. I just lost time because I didn't, I didn't do much, you know? So I'd rather, if I like something, I screenshot it. And after a week, I'm sending it to my computer. I'm putting it all putting together. Putting it next to each other. Yeah. And that's, and that is, you know, time that I, that I didn't waste, but I was working actually. Well, I, I was yeah, like planning. Mm, there is this. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There's this series of planning that has to be done for everything from beginning to be a designer to figuring out what you like to do as a designer style all the way up to the yeah. project itself. It's a, it's a long game, right? It's a long uh, it's a long maybe game, I yeah. should just say it's a never it's a never ending game really like and if you don't oh. have patience it, it will be a, a painful game if you yeah 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 if you don't have patience right for sure and you also have to think that a lot of people that um that, that you follow and, and you think that they're perfect like I, I gotta tell you that for sure they also compare themselves to other designers you know it's it's a never ending oh, yeah. loop oh, yeah. you know yeah there is always, always, even people that you think that, oh my God, they're so confident in what they do. And for sure, they just go to work and kill it. No, they have bad days. Mm -hmm. They they have imposter syndrome a lot, for sure. And and for sure, they, they, they like, you know, every three weeks they think, maybe I should change my style. Maybe that, maybe I should just dump everything and do this because I think it's better or... So, because sometimes I'm, I'm, you know, I, I talk to people that, that I really admire and, and, and I realize that in the end, like we are all in the same, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. kind of no doubting one knows ourselves all the time. <laughs> yeah. Like you were just doing stuff just because we like it. And then, and then eventually we get, you know, like you get good at it and, and, and that's it. There is no much secret than, than just like try to be happy and live your life and uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and everything is going to come, you know, as long as you have passion for what you do and that's important, mm. but everything like the style and the style is something that I don't think anybody should, should even think about because when you start mm. thinking about style, you get in, you get in this hole where everything you do is because you have a style, you want to have a style, you want to be recognizable. It's just going to come like one day someone is going to come and is going to say, yo, um, um, I saw one piece and 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 I knew it was you. This happened to me like five five years ago or four years ago. I don't know. Mm. And personally, if you ask me, I, I I didn't have a style back then, and nor I do now. But some friends said like I saw this picture in like Good Type or something featured. Okay. And I yeah. knew this was you. And then I entered and it was you. And I was like, oh, I, do, do I have a style? You know? And I, and, I, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it happened. You know, it happened. So I think this happens eventually to to everybody so you just have to don't think about it it's just it's gonna come think about it. yeah no i i think i think this is perfect i think i think we've landed the plane i think that's great there's still <laughs> i feel like there's still so much to talk about so let's definitely plan a part two where For we're sure. just gonna we're just gonna go more into like this whole i just want to explore like we started talking about process just briefly and i think it's so important so let's we're gonna plan a part two for sure so everyone watching uh, you know, get ready for that. Thanks Jimbo, so thank you so much for taking this time to talk with us, to partner with Kittle. Uh, we're doing a lot together. I, hopefully we can do um, a challenge with you soon. We'll do a challenge, uh, your own your own challenge in Kittle, which will be really, really fun. Oh, that would be yeah. lovely. Yes. I'm, particip so. I'm participating in this week's challenge. Nice. So. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, let's yeah. definitely talk and get you hooked up with a, with a challenge for sure. I would um, love that. Is there anything you want to uh, say before we sign off? Anything going on in your life? Any new products? Any new courses? Whatever. I give you full freedom to say whatever you <laughs> say before we sign off here. Um, um, right now, just uh, I would just say that if you if you you know are getting started and you don't you know you don't know where to start, just we have a lot of freebies in our website. You just have to become a, a member of our newsletter and and that's it there's a lot of free stuff there there's a lot of videos in youtube uh, as well like just following shoutbam.com 
um and yeah i'm not gonna say what we're working on because like it's always something different and sure. uh yeah we we have planned already like i think we're gonna release like three new products soon wow. that are gonna be cool that i'm really excited about wow. three wow and also i'm planning a little composition mini course that i'm gonna also release like in, in a month but that again um Thanks, if you Jim. allow me to <laughs> to send you some newsletter i'm gonna tell you more about it and perfect, you can exactly previous perfect. there and and that's it. That's all I want to say. Thank you so much. <laughs> awesome. Well, everyone, don't forget to subscribe here on Kittle to the channel. Subscribe to Shout Bam. Everything is linked down in the description for you. Thank you so much for watching and for supporting us. We will see you next time. Bye. See you guys.